Hi, everyone. Um, I am with Agenda Faramet and Faki Zinovka. Um, and um, if you're here, you are here to um, talk about copyright issues in social media and virtual worlds. So welcome and thank you for coming. Um, I am going to try to talk slowly because I tend to talk a little bit too quickly when I'm doing these. So if I'm going too fast, somebody shout at me. Um, and we will have a question and answer discussion session after I've gone through all of the um, slides that I've got. And I will be glad to discuss um, pretty much anything that we are talking about here. Um, I have said this in Plurk, and I'll say it here. I know that some of you are really interested in what's going on with Curio and Hush. I can't talk about that. I can't go into details about that. I can talk in general about um, copyright and, um, and content creation and really want to talk about um, copyright and content creation, but I can't talk about the case. Um, so let me um, let me get started. All right. So um, I think as we all are aware, uh, users of social media and virtual worlds, users of the internet in general. Um, face challenges that were not foreseen by the people that wrote the first Copyright Act, the Copyright Act of 1909. They had no idea. Um, even the Copyright Act that we are currently operating under, the Copyright Act of 1976, no clue what the internet was going to bring. So let's talk about what copyright actually is, what we talk about when we talk about copyright. Copyright, the Copyright Act grants the creator of a work, the author of a work, several exclusive rights, rights which together provide the creator control over the work. And that control is what we think of when we think of copyright. So these rights include the rights of reproduction, distribution, derivation, public performance, and public display. So reproduction is making copies. Distribution is putting those copies out. Um, derivation is adapting those copies, making different um, works out of those copies. Uh, public performance is so um, a, a movie or a musical work is, um, is you know, performing that. Um, and public display is art. Um, a creator was, receives these rights, receives copyright, as soon as the work is fixed in a tangible medium. So as soon as the work has been actually created and is capable of being reproduced. So in other words, you get copyright the moment you um, create a, you know, a, a picture in Photoshop. You don't, you don't have to do anything. You, you have it. Um, you don't have copyright over something you have just imagined in your head. You have to actually put it down and and have you know something that you can then reproduce and um, and you know have a, a tangible copy of. Um, so the uh, the author does not have to register the work with the copyright office. So put a little C in a circle notice on it in order for the copyright to be valid. However, there are benefits to registration. And I'm going to talk in, in detail about those benefits a little bit later. I'm just going to touch on them right now. The creator does, does have to register the copyright in order to take legal action against an act of infringement, uh, with some exceptions. But yeah. Um, Additionally, if the copyright is registered within three months of publication, the copyright owner may be eligible for statutory damages and attorney's fees. And at the very least, the registration serves as basic evidence of a copyright's validity and ownership. 
So what does this mean to users of virtual worlds and social media? So, you know, us. The internet as we know it functions through a combination of reproductions, distributions, derivations, public performances, and public displays of copyrighted works. Social media, virtual worlds in particular, thrive on the association of myriad copyrighted creations, which, in concurrence, create a rich environment for communicating and sharing ideas. Most of the transmission of copyrighted works that is done over the internet, specifically over social media and virtual worlds, is non-infringing. It is done by the copyright owner, or it is done with the copyrighted owner, copyright owner's permission through acceptance of terms of use, or it is permitted through an ex uh, exclusion such as fair use. So most of it is fine. That's how we, how we use the internet. However, some transmission of copyrighted works on social media and virtual worlds is infringing. And when it is, there are some unique challenges to responding to infringement. Do, do, do. So, let's talk about the screen resing. There we go. Let's talk about terms of use because that's how we how we get our stuff out there and how we operate. The Copyright Act is only one source of law that governs content in virtual worlds and social media. Additionally, and in many ways more importantly, the sites that we use all of the time, their terms of use agreement governs that site's content. So for instance, although there are content creators from all over the world on Second Life, the laws of the United States are the laws of Second Life because all Second Life residents agreed to be governed by those laws under the terms of use. Terms of use agreements are just contracts and they are co governed by contract law. Even though a user is just clicking agree, that agree click is what lawyers would refer to as a manifestation of assent. It's a fundamental requirement of contract formation. I know that's kind of boring, but it's really important. You can't have a contract without people, you know, manifesting assent and saying, okay, I recognize that this is a contract and I'm agreeing to what it says. Users of a social media site or virtual world must be aware of terms of use to be bound by them. So most sites, most social media sites or virtual world um, use a mandatory, what we call a mandatory non-leaky click through. It's a, um, you know, you are presented with the terms of use in a page and you have to scroll all the way down and click except down at the bottom. That's what we call a, a mandatory non-leaky click through. Um, it's a page that presents the terms of use to the user, requires the user to look, for, look at them, or at least, you know, perform the action of scrolling down, and will not allow the user to bypass them. So the use of the website alone can form a binding browse wrap agreement, but only if the user has actual knowledge that the site's terms and conditions provide for such a binding contract. Um, So uh, sometimes you'll see something in a, um, terms of use that says, you know, hey, we can change this policy at any time without letting you know, and if you don't notice, you're screwed. Courts don't like that. Courts will strike those down. Um, so uh, if you see that in terms of use, don't worry about it. Um, you know, if you're... Uh, None of you are attorneys, I don't think, but if you are, God, don't put those in there. Those are so bad. Excuse me, I'm drinking water. Anyway, courts hate those. Okay. I don't know why this is rising so slowly. 
I swear to God, this normally works. Okay. Oh. Anyway, this is what I just said. So you can read it really fast because I'm going to click through it because it's kind of boring. Next. Pinterest. All right. <laughs> now I have Pinterest in here even though, you know, it was controversial like three months ago. But it's still kind of interesting because it is a social media site. It is a site that operates, you know, with sharing um, copyrighted images. Um, and it's a really good example of I'm talking about terms of use. I'm talking about copyright in social media. It's a good example. Um, and when I start talking more about Second Life, we're using Pinterest as an example. You'll see the, the relation. So questions arose about um, social media site Pinterest's business model and its terms of use potentially facilitating copyright infringement. Pinterest encourages its users to create interest boards on which they pin or attach images they find on the web. Pinterest's terms of use require the user to have permission for any images posted on its site. And Pinterest's terms of use disclaim liability, require the user to indemnify and defend Pinterest for any claims of infringement that arise out of the use of its site. However, Pinterest's users are very unlikely to know what they do and do not have permission to use. And Pinterest's site, built around the concept of finding images on the web and sharing them easily, is only likely to contribute to user confusion. While Pinterest's terms of use require the user to have permission, most easily obtained by pinning content already owned by the user, Pinterest's site etiquette discourages self-promotion by pinning the user's own content. So Pinterest responded to the controversy my cat is talking to you. I don't know if you can hear her. Um, Pinterest responded by clarifying its terms of use, creating code that, the, that third party sites can add to their pages. The code will block Pinterest users from pinning I images from sites that are using this code. So Flickr, which I'm sure you're all aware of, Flickr added the code to all of its images that are not Creative Commons licensed. However, this solution shifts the burden to copyright holders to protect themselves rather than putting the burden on people that want to use images to go out and get permission. Now, the reason that I'm talking about Pinterest is that it is important to know that Pinterest is not a unique situation. Every social media site, every virtual world has terms of use similar to Pinterest's. They all disclaim liability. They all require the user to indemnify and defend the site. They all require the user to only post content for which the user has permission. Pinterest stands out because its business model is encouraging users to go out, find content on the web, and bring it back to Pinterest's site to share it. However, sharing the same content in the same way on Facebook, Flickr, or Plurk creates exactly the same copyright liability for the user. Exactly as it would on Second Life. You know, you go out and you find an image online that is cute, you come back and you make a, a t-shirt of, of it and you share it, you know, you sell the t-shirt on Second Life, same copyright liability. Next. Are these slides resing for everybody well enough that they can see read them? Cool. Good. Fabulous. Okay, so we'll talk about ownership rights of data in virtual worlds because that's interesting. 
So who owns what in social media? And, my God, virtual worlds. Who generally, a content creator owns the content that he or she creates, which is kind of obvious. However, courts, which shouldn't surprise anyone, courts are still catching up with social media and virtual worlds and trying to determine, determine legally what and how much of an individual's posted data an individual owns. Last year, a federal district court held that an individual owns his private posts, pro profile data, and inbox contents on a social networking site or webmail site. However, as we have just seen in the last week, with a New York court forcing Twitter to give up public tweets belonging to an Occupy protester, public posts, such as Facebook wall posts or public tweets, may not be as protected. Courts in the United States have not had much opportunity to examine ownership of virtual property. However, other countries have considered virtual property in some landmark decisions. In a January decision concerning the theft of virtual goods in the online game RuneScape, the Dutch Supreme Court held that it, despite an end-user license from RuneScape retaining all ownership of virtual property in the game, individual players have property rights in virtual objects. That is big news. While the RuneScape terms and conditions did retain ownership of all virtual property in the game and grant only a right to use. So this is unlike Second Life where you know you actually have some ownership rights. This is more like WoW where the you know the game owns everything and the players only have the ability to use objects in the game. The goods in question were under the exclusive dom dominion of the victim. The court compared the goods to a passport, which is the undisputed property of the state of the Netherlands, but can rightfully be possessed by its holder and can be stolen by a thief. Further, the Dutch Supreme Court held that virtual items have value based on the time and effort invested in acquiring them and the value placed on, other, placed on them by others in the game. While this decision does not affect the United States, similar decisions have been reached in China and South Korea, signaling a global trend. <clears throat> so we don't have a decision in the United States about the value of virtual property in a game yet. We're starting to see these decisions come down around the world, <clears throat> and it won't be too much longer. Now, in the United States, there have been numerous lawsuits regarding Second Life. In one, which I'm sure some of you are aware of, a user sued Lemon Labs for access to the virtual land and goods he owned when his account was closed. This was Bragg versus Linden Lab. When that case went to arbitration, the case was notable for its dissolution of Lemon Lab's mandatory arbitration pro provision. But because it only went to arbitration, we don't have a ruling on whether or not um, the, the virtual goods and the virtual lands, um, you know, whether or not the, the user had ownership of those items. It would have been a great case if it actually had gone to court. <clears throat> so, um, some of the fun stuff. Infringement actions. Spending your copyright in social media and virtual worlds, now the big problem is the cost. A copyright is a powerful intellectual property asset. However, it can be extremely costly to defend. In the United States, Copyright lawsuits may only be filed in a federal court. Litigation is costly and time-consuming. 
Even a successful copyright infringement lawsuit can cost a litigant tens of thousands of dollars or more. For example, a nonprofit organization that won a very straightforward copyright lawsuit against copyright troll White Haven is still trying to recover over $30,000 in attorney's fees and court costs. For many users of social media and virtual worlds, copyrighted materials such as blog posts, photographs, artwork, or virtual goods don't have a high monetary value, not high enough to justify litigation. Additionally, when even the cost of registration of a work may be higher than the work's monetary value, many individuals fail to register their works or just don't know how to do it. This lack of registration can deter owners from defending their rights, which is a problem, especially when dealing with small business owners who make their living from their copyrights. Now, there are a few ways to defend copyrights short of litigation. Sites in the United States will take down infringing content under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, the DMCA. Section 512 of the DMCA provides content creators the ability to request the removal of infringing content, provided that the person claiming infringement provides notice to the service provider, and the service provider allows the alleged infringer opportunity to dispute the, dispute the claim and return the material to the service. There are certain steps that a claimant must take under the DMCA, which I'm not going to go through here because I'm sure most of you know the DMCA. So yeah, I'm not going to read all of the stuff that everybody has to do under the DMCA for the takedown notice and the counter notice. Um, if anybody has questions about the DMCA notice and counter notice, I can certainly go through those. Um, the problem is that the DMCA leads both parties to litigation, and litigation is expensive. Now here's the silver, silver lining, and unfortunately it's kind of in the distance, but it's a big silver lining. Congress and the United States Copyright Office have acknowledged that the high cost of copyright litigation is a significant problem for both copyright holders and, co and copyright users. And in 2011, Congress tasked the Copyright Office with a study on remedies for copyright small claims. That study should be completed in October of 2013. So while it may not offer immediate relief to social media and virtual world users, it is a very powerful light in the distance. So. What can you do? If you're creating content in social media and virtual worlds, my God, register your copyrights. We talked about copyright registration and what it can do for you. The biggest thing that it can do for you is give you access to statutory damages if you are having to file um, a lawsuit, if you are ending up in a lawsuit. Statutory damages start at $750 per infringement and can go up to $150,000 per infringement if you can prove willfulness. That's, this is why registration makes a difference. It's because if you have access to those statutory damages, first off, a lawyer will jump to take your case because the lawyer knows that they will get paid. Um, and second off, you know that if you can prove infringement, you have at least something coming to you. Um, if you don't register, the only thing that you can get is actual damages. So you have to prove that because this person infringed your copyright, you lost this number of sales. And when you're talking about social media or virtual worlds, you're talking about nothing. You're talking about so little money that it's, it's horrible to try to prove actual damages. You could also get an injunction 
if you don't have um, if you don't have your copyright registered. And an injunction is basically the court telling someone that they have to do something or have to not do something. So an injunction um, tells the other person, uh, you have to stop selling this infringing item. Which can be good if that's all you want, if, if all you want is your uh, it is the infringer to stop selling um, this item that is infringing your copyright. Um, uh, one second, I will answer questions. I promise as soon as I am done. And those are great questions. Um, and, uh, and so you can do that. But again, litigation is so expensive. And so you may be paying $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 just to tell someone stop selling this infringing item. Um, if you are, uh, you know, Time Warner, that's nothing. You can spend that money to tell some random dude to stop selling, you know, to stop infringing your copyrights. But if you are a blogger, you don't have that money. Um, so, yeah, consider using a Creative Commons license. Sometimes, you know, it, if you're a blogger, um, you know, on my real life blog, I use a Creative Commons license because I don't mind if somebody wants to quote my, my posts. I, I would love for them to quote my posts. That's fabulous. Knock yourself out. Um, just give me attribution. That's great, you know. Um, so, Creative Commons writes the license for you. All you have to do is go figure out which license you want to use and tag it. Um, you know, it, find a, a license that works for you and use that. Um, if you're using other people's content, get permission. Just ask. A lot of people want their, their work to have greater exposure. If you just ask, often they'll say yes. Um, you know, you go find Creative Commons licensed content. Google has the ability to search for just Creative Commons licensed content. Um, there are a lot of stock image sites that have Creative Commons licensed content. Um, you can find images in the public domain. You can find um, images that are purposefully free, or you can sign up for um, images that, uh, that, you know, if you agree to their, um, this site's terms of use, um, you can use those images. Um, and if somebody contacts you and says, hey, you're infringing my copyright, take it down. Don't argue. Don't get into the back and forth. Don't get into a situation where somebody's going to call a lawyer on you. Um, and with terms of use, it is a contract. It is a binding contract that you are manifesting assent to. Read it. Don't just scroll all the way down and, and well, your eyes will glaze over because they're horrible, but read it. Um, and think about what sites are doing with your content. Um, and that's what I've got. So, um, all right, so good questions. If you're a citizen of another country, uh, do you need to register your Second Life content in the United States? No. Um, if, you are, uh, if you are a citizen of the United States, you're, um, that's when I said earlier um, that there are exceptions. That is an exception. And I say that with a caveat because I assume that you are, okay, wait, I shouldn't assume. Um, if you're a citizen of the United States, you sh okay. There, <laughs> okay, that's a hard question to answer because there are certain countries that are part of the Berne Convention 
and there are certain countries that are not part of the Berne Convention. If you're a citizen of a Berne Convention country, um, then your work is covered um, to a degree. Um, and you don't have to register it in the United States to in the United States for certain things. Um, and that's, okay, um, yeah. Uh, it's a very long and complicated answer. Um, Canada is a burn convention country. So Canada, a Canadian citizen could um, could protect their um, their copyright in the United States to a degree. Um, so, do you register each individual item you create? That is also a complicated answer. You can register um, collections. So. If your work is, um, let's say you're creating a shirt, um, and you have that shirt in 12 different colors, and um, all 12 of those colors came out on the same day, you don't have to register 12 different items. You register one item and just say, um, you put down, you know, shirt and as the title of the work, and then you have 12 different contents to the collection. Um, so it's, the registration can be complicated, um, and a lot of attorneys will tell you that you need an attorney to do a registration, and I will tell you that you do not. Um, you just, um, you need to be willing to deal with it if the Copyright Office rejects your first couple efforts. Um, so if you're willing to kind of deal with some trial and error with the Copyright Office, um, yeah, if you if you want to add another color later, um, it's not part of the same publication, so you need to to add it separately. Um, so yeah, you kind of want to you kind of want to get them all out at the same time. Um, if you want to um, if you want to register them as a collection. Um, yeah, Moo's question, um, you can get a ruling, but if the person was broke to begin with, you get nothing. That's, we refer to that as being judgment proof. Um, so yeah, that's absolutely, yeah. You can, people can, uh, that's a common problem in law, and that's not just copyright. Um, people deal with that all the time. You know, you get in a car accident, and you try to sue the guy, and the guy has no money. Um, yeah, <laughs> can't get blood from a turnip, exactly. Um, yes, yeah, sparkly, yes, it, they have to be basically the same item. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I will be posting a copy um, of not just the slides, but also the notes that I used for this um, presentation shortly. I can't promise I'll get them up today, but I'll try to get them up by the first of the week. Um, it costs, in the United States, it costs $35 to file a copyright. And it takes the United States Copyright Office is trying to reduce filing times, but it takes a couple months. It takes, mm, I want to say, three months. Mm. 
a good question. I do not know. I think so. Okay, so if you're using pieces of full perm items they bought with the intent to use for sale, can you, yes, you can still copyright your portion of the work. What you do is disclose that you used part of someone else's work. Um, so uh, there is, there is a place on the registration form to say that um, I used this source or I used this piece um, in making my, um, my work and you credit the creator of the piece that you work, that you used in your work. Um, Maggie Dahl, um, so copyright a mesh, uh, you will also copyright the textures. So what you do is um, you're create, you'll copyright a work of visual art that has more than one component. So you, it will have the DAE file. I don't know MeSH very well, but that's right, isn't it? And then you also have the, um, the uh, PNG file or however you saved the, the texture. Okay. All right. So you would you would save the the blend file um, instead of the DAE file, whichever worked. Yeah. So so you're you're going to be copy copywriting the work, not not just the texture, not just the blend file. It's it's the work that you're that you're trying to, to register. Right, but the but the work includes the texture that goes on it. It's sort of like um, uh, a, a sculpture that that would that would, when it is finished, be painted. Um, that is a very good question, V. Um, I don't think I can answer that. Uh, let me uh, let me just cl clarify your question. V required to respond to foreign rulings. You mean if there is a case, if, if there is a ruling? I mean, for instance, this uh, Dutch Supreme Court ruling that held that users of a video game have a proprietary right um, for objects in the game. Linden Labs is not required to respond to that ruling. because that's not United States law. So I'm, I'm not sure. OK.
Yeah, that's what I thought you were asking. I, I can't answer that. Okay, images taken in Second Life and then put on to Flickr, do they need to be registered? Um, images taken in Second Life um, are, as far as I am concerned, basically like a photograph. Um, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, Alex. Um, you could you could register. I believe that you could register um, in world pictures just like you could register photographs. Um, I'm not familiar with my free copyright. Yeah, um, Moo, uh, their screenshot ruling is basically that you can take screenshots and that your screenshots do not infringe the intellectual property of the person that made the items in world. Um, okay, Sonora, if you do not file copyright, can you still be protected and can you file later? Um, so you can write. A, a timely registration is within three months of publication. If you don't register within three months of publication, you can absolutely still register. Your copyright is still valid, but you're not eligible for statutory damages, and you're not eligible for attorney's fees and court costs and all of that. So you don't get all of the goodies if you don't register on time. But your copyright is still valid. Your copyright is always Still valid. It's still yours. You just don't get all the goodies if you don't register on time. <clears throat> okay. So scrolling back up. Um, so if a foreign court rules that a user in Second Life infringes someone else's copyright, does it matter to Linden Labs? No. Not really. Uh, what Linden Labs cares about is the DMCA. Okay, and you're in the UK, that would be covered by the Berne Convention, correct? Um, how, responses are, how responsive are sites like Flickr, Picasa, etc. to claims of copyright infringement? Um, they are very responsive to the DMCA. They have to be. Um, sites in the United States are granted safe harbor as long as they comply with the DMCA. And that safe harbor is absolute gold to any site with user-generated con content. No site worth its salt is going to risk their safe harbor. So they're going to follow the DMCA absolutely to the letter. Um, so as long as you're following DMCA takedown and um, counter notice procedures, uh, they'll respond real quickly. Now, I know that Linden Labs has gotten in some trouble for not following uh, DMCA, um, and there have been some significant lawsuits about its um, responsiveness, and um, all of those have gone to arbitration and or gone to settlement. Um, and that's something that Linen Labs struggles with because its, uh, its DMCA safe harbor is, if it ever lost that, it, it would go under real fast. Uh, so my free copyright is a site where people upload their work, get a date on them. No, it would not provide minimal protection. Um, it's, uh, it would provide 
what it would provide is the exact same thing as putting the C in a circle beside your work. Um, it's, we used to, yeah, I, I was going to say poor man's copyright. Um, and poor man's copyright does not provide any protection at all. Um, it's, uh, it has, it has really been, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I had a lot of friends that used to do that. It's, uh, it's not, um, it's not a valid registration. It's not, um, courts don't, um, courts don't honor that. No, it does not help at all. Um, see, here's the thing. Let, let me sort of slow, slow things down a little bit. The $35 per work gives you the ability to sue. If you're not planning on suing, and like I said, litigation is crazy expensive, then the $35 per work is, um, it doesn't do anything for you. You already have copyright. So the poor man's copyright, yeah, you can do it. It's fine, um, but it doesn't buy you anything. You already have it. Um, you, you know, you can save your files. You've got, uh, I'm sure if you're doing work in Photoshop, you've got creation dates on your files. Um, if you ever had to defend yourself, um, uh, you don't need anything. You don't need the C. You don't need that at all. That's that's something you needed back in the 1950s, but ever since 1976, you don't need that at all. That's antiquated. Um, I, I say that. Uh, let me give you the um, the caveat: the little C in a circle can be used um, as an argument against innocent infringement, but that's such a um, that's such a rare defense that, I mean, basically nobody even believes that anymore. The C in a circle is not used. It's, it's an old, um, antiquated uh, device. Um, you have copyright. The moment that you write down, if, if I wrote a funny limerick, right now, if I made up a funny lim limerick and, um, and I wrote it down, then I have copyright on it. Um, it's, that's all I need. Um, I can't sue somebody on it unless I go and, um, and register the copyright. I can't get statutory damages unless I register it within 30, uh, within three months. But, um, I have copyright. Um, I, I, the, the little uh, um, courthouse that you're sitting in right now, I built this last night because I was trying to come up with something awesome, you know, not really awesome, but kind of awesome that people could sit in. Uh, I have copyright on this goofy looking thing. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, it's you know, for what it's worth, I have copyright on this little courthouse looking thing that you're sitting in. Um, and I, I'm certainly not going to register this copyright, but, um, but I have it. And, um, and I don't, you know, I don't have to do anything to keep that. Um, and uh, yes, you can absolutely come be a juror. You can absolutely come sit in the jury box. That would be awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, here we go. Awesome. Um, yes, uh, 
you know, all of the, the fabulous textures that Moo has created, you've got copyright on them forever and ever, well, not forever and ever. You've got them for, you know, after the day that you die, 70 years will pass until that copyright expires. And that's crazy. But yeah, that's, oh yes, on Jura requests, totally. Oh, if a gala situation ha happens. All right. I know, I know. Um, people are scared. Um, if a gala situation happens, um, <laughs> you guys are on crack. Yes, people are scared. I know. Um, uh, It's hard for me to answer that question um, because my hope is that there is an easier way out of that situation. Um, but um, I can't obviously discuss it. Um, the, the best way out of that situation is to let lawyers negotiate. Um, I don't understand why that's, I don't understand why this situation happened to begin with. Um, I, this is, I can't, I can't talk about it. Um, and I understand that people are scared and people are scared because this is so outside the pale of anything that's reasonable. And I totally understand that. And I wish I could put your fears at rest. Um, and hopefully, oh my God, hopefully I will be able to do that real soon. That would be awesome. Um, I'm working on it as hard as I fucking can. That's the best I can say. And I wish I could give you a better answer. Oh, no, Linden Labs isn't banning them from anything. Um, in fact, uh, Gala will have new skins out as soon as she, I mean, she's, she's working her little fingers to the bone. That's why she's so quiet right now. She is, she's, I mean, seriously, her skins are hand done from the ground up, and it takes her a long time. So she's working her little fingers to the bone. Um, so... She's, I mean, I know some of you here, Juliet, and you are a skin creator. You, you know how long it takes. Um, um, she can't use anything that Hush filed a DMCA on. And I right now we're there are a lot of open questions yeah uh, just we're talking a little too much about the hush curious situation and I really can't talk about that yeah more protection doing mesh. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, te I don't, I don't know about the technical protections that Lennon Labs has implemented. I know, I know that they have. Oh, I see. I see. Um, no. Uh, what Linden Labs has is the um, is the DMCA.
a really good question, Issa. Um, that's a really good, um, that's a really good question. Um, I hope that this does not result in a chilling effect on filing DMCAs. Um, it's, uh, Creators need to be capable of um, protecting their intellectual property, and the DMCA is supposed to be able to um, to protect them. Um, Oh, yes, absolutely. Please share this afterwards. Um, I, I would love a link to it if you're recording it. That's fabulous. Um, cool. Great. Wonderful. Um, yeah, I, I tried to set up a little podcast something or other, but completely failed. Um, Um, yeah, I completely understand the chilling effect that it's had. Um, I hope that when things settle down and when we have an answer that, um, that content creators will be more confident. Um, I, I hope that, um, God, I... Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a, I don't have an answer for you, Issa, and it's a great answer. It's a great question, and it's a such a difficult, ugly situation. Um, unfortunately, I think for the most part, Linen Lab followed, um, Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Good point, Tier. Um, uh, what Tier said is, it, it would it be smarter to consider before DMCAing having a backup plan on to make good on the word that you will take it to court. Um, DMCAs get abused now, not just in this situation, but a false DMCA is not an uncommon thing and is also a scare tactic. Should we be more responsible for our work? Um, yeah, um, I, I think that um, one of the one of the problems is that um, is that too many people, especially people who um, make their sole living off of um, content creation in Second Life um, have no backup plan and have and rely entirely on the DMCA um, and don't register their copyrights, don't um, don't work with an attorney or a business. Um, uh, you know, a, a biz business advisor or an accountant or, you know, some professional planner to help guide them just in case there is a problem. Um, and I think that um, some sort of professional business advisor for someone who is making this their business might have... Um, identified some warning signs. Uh, yeah. Um, for instance, if if and I've I've told her this. If Gala had registered her copyrights in her skins before this happened, we'd be in a very different place. Um, uh, yeah. Um, but but she's still in a good place. She's she's still in yeah she's still in a good place she's still in a very strong position
That's true. Yeah. Um, would Linden Labs be more responsive if you have registration plus filing of a DMCA or is their response the same? Um, technically their response is the same. Um, there, that is just how the DMCA works is you file the DMCA um, and the registration doesn't matter and that's actually a very good thing because um, those of us without registrations wouldn't want them giving preference to people with re with registrations. So um, it, it is actually a good thing that um, as long as you have a properly filled out DMCA, um, that Linden Labs will treat it the same. <laughs> okay, so if you file a DMCA and get countered, um, if you have registration, then you decide if you want to pursue a lawsuit. And that's not always an easy question. Um, because, as I said, lawsuits are expensive. Um, then you go find the um, provider of the website and the provider of the website should have a DMCA policy. I'm not sure I understand. Can you clarify? Yeah, uh, the, um, so the question is, how do you proceed if you created something, if something you created isn't copied and shared in Second Life but on some website? And then what if it is the provider? What if who is the provider? Oh, them, right. Um, you go upstream. Yes, those guys who shall re remain unnamed. Uh, go upstream. They. <laughs> Yeah, um, you the, those forums have a provider. They they have um, they're getting their internet internet access from somewhere. So you go find who's giving them internet access, and my guess is they're getting their internet access from someone exactly. They're yeah they're not they're not in the United States, and if they're not in the United States then you're, yes, they move regularly because everybody has copyright laws and, yeah. Um, yeah, they're, uh, they're always trying to stay one step ahead of, um, of someone chasing after them. Um, generally what you do is you go, you find who, um, you know, it, if you're not getting any, um, a, a, any uh, relief from the provider, you go look for, for the provider's provider 
Um, but if you're talking about somebody that is um, that is outside the United States and is in a country that is um, harboring them, you're kind of screwed. Um, but then you're getting into a situation that is um, leading certain people to say that SOPA and PIPA were the right idea. And that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, so who's next? Did I miss anybody's question? Because I know we kind of went real fast earlier. I see typing, so I'll wait. But I don't have anybody on ignore. Oh, she's too far back from me. Oh my God, please. I'm so sorry, Isabel. I, I, you, you sort of came in late. I had said earlier, if you're by the door, you're too far back from me, and uh, and I couldn't. Um, you're not within 20 meters of the podium. I'm so sorry. I seriously did not mean to ignore you. I'm scrolling up to see your question. Okay, so the question was, I only do custom con content from me to one party. I use a standard contract that I got from a friend who is a gra graphic designer. In the contract, it, it stipulates things like, should we go to court, I would be entitled to legal fees, etc. Would that be upheld? Do I still need to file? Okay, that's a um, complex question. Um, and... Um, I can't give you an answer about whether or not the um, the court the contract is um, is okay. Um, um, but you would, yeah. Um, Yeah. In theory, um, you know what? I think, yeah, you you need to um, you have the contract. Um, between you and one other person, and the other person is okay with it, um, you might be okay. Um, but I just, 
Um, without looking at the contract, I can't, I can't tell you if it would be upheld, if it's fine. My guess is you're probably okay, but I, you know, I can't, I can't tell you for sure. Um, but um, if it's just between you and one other person, yeah, you probably, you probably all right. Um, Okay, so Sparkly's question. Uh, so to clarify, if I have registration, I have to go to federal court and cannot file on my own in small claims court at this time. That is correct because um, copyright has to be litigated in federal court right now. And that's when I was talking earlier about um, the uh, uh, Congress and the Copyright Office trying to work on a solution for copyright small claims. Uh, hopefully we will have a small claims solution in the next couple of years. <laughs> um, and there has never been a um, there's never been a small claims option in copyright. Uh, and that um, that movement towards a copyright small claims is a huge sea, sea change and it's being driven by social media users and uh, not really by virtual worlds users because let's face it that's a small community but it's by um, social media users it's by internet users um, because this massive user-generated content movement has turned copyright from something owned by people with hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to something owned by everybody. So um, I think we're going to start seeing a massive change in the way that copyright and copyright litigation and copyright protection work in the next five years. Um, okay, um, so Creative Commons, when something specifies as commercial use and something specifies as derivative work, as far as Creative Commons licenses, there's a Creative Commons license that allows commercial use and one that allows derivative work, do you mean qualifies as commercial use? Um, okay, all right. <laughs> so yes, um, something qualifies as commercial use um, when it is used, um, well, when it is used in commerce. Um, for copyright, well, for Creative Commons purposes, um, I don't, I'm sure that Creative Commons defines it specifically somewhere on their site, um, and you can probably look it up. Um, but um, what they mean is selling it. Absolutely, sure, yeah. Yeah, no question. Uh, uh, answering Alex. Okay, so Lamb, um, the benefits of putting a copyright, I assume you mean a copyright registration to an item created a year ago. Um, yeah, okay. Um, the benefit would be if you needed to sue someone, if you needed to um, sue for infringement, right. That would be the benefit. 
All right, so for, for full perm creations, as in creating full perm kits, would it be better to file copyright and include a license? Yes, um, for using it to create stuff or in, just use a license stipulating permitted use. Would you still be protected if someone got your templates? No. Um, yeah, you would be, it would be better to file copyright and include a license. Um, if you're ever planning on suing to um, protect your, uh, your property. Um, if you're not ever planning on suing to protect your property, then uh, just, just include the license, but note that the license doesn't necessarily protect you all that much. Um, uh, you know you would not still be protected um, if someone got your templates illegally because what are you going to do? Say they breached the license? Right. I mean, you, you still own the copyright. You can still use the DMCA. You still have access to all of that. But you you don't have um, you don't have the the money um, options that registration would get you. Uh huh. Does the collection all have to be created with a certain period of time? No. Um, they it has to be published at the same time. So if you, if you wrote all your sh short stories over the period of 10 years and then published them all at the same time, you'd be, you'd be fine. Yep. Correct. This wording. Um, what do you mean have to do with anything? Right. Oh, I see. Uh, so if you were to um, eventually go to court. Um, I, uh, there are absolutely no legal precedences that could, um, that, you know, that could answer your question, but I think the answer is no, and exactly for what Maggie Dahl just said. Um, Words have a trade use, and within the Second Life trade, full, full permission does have a pretty specific meaning. So courts would look to this community, this world, to see what full permission means. Yeah, getting slow again. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay, I don't see any typing, so I think we may be done. 
Aha! Derivatives of your own works are fine. Peachy. You are, you have the copyright, you have the right to make derivatives of your own work, more or less. Um, you would have to register that separately. Now, when I said earlier, you know, you guys can totally go to the copyright office and, and register your own copyright. Um, you don't need a lawyer for that. You don't, but you can get a lawyer to help you register a copyright. And if you're not interested in um, all of the trial and error, uh, there are copyright lawyers that do that and do that fast and um, and you know we'll uh, you know we'll we'll help you. Um, that's what they do for a living, and they won't um, they won't gouge you. They will do it. Um, a lot of them will do it for a flat fee um, that won't be a snillion dollars. Yeah, that's absolutely. You can absolutely ask a lawyer to do that for you, um, and. And they will do that, and they won't. <laughs> yeah. Um, calendar of events for here, not yet. It's going to be basically, um, I'm going to be presenting something roughly once a month. And um, I'm happy to take suggestions for topics. I know um, Anubis had wanted me to do one on DJs and music use in Second Life. Um, I absolutely want to do one on um, the escort industry and maybe the BDSM industry in Second Life because um, that would be cool. Um, yeah, so, you know, I really want to get uh, some really cool stuff. Um, yeah, well, we've got, I mean, this is... We, we've actually got a whole bunch of attorneys um, that are in Second Life, and so I'm trying to get um, somebody to do one on taxation, on Second Life earnings, maybe one on employment, because um, those are not my areas. And so I'm, I'm hoping that we can get some other people other than me to do some really cool stuff for... Second Life residents and just have, you know, at least once a month, um, we will have, not as part of my series, but as part of something else, we will have somebody from Amnesty International that was supposed to speak at the end of June, but she had to reschedule, so she will be speaking real soon now. Um, and so we're, we're having kind of regular events over here. Um, and... We'd love to, to have people come. Um, creative Commons for blogs. Copyright is better for create. Uh, wait. Um, am I understanding a copyright is better for creations such as clothing and mesh rather than a blog? Um, so um, what Chance had asked was, whether uh, copyright was better for creations such as clothing and mesh rather than a blog. Um, copyright is good for a blog, too. Um, it's just sort of hard for a blog because, you know, trying to register each blog post is, um, is taxing. Um, but... Um, you certainly can. Now, as I said before, you've already got copyright in your blog posts. So unless you plan on suing someone anytime your blog post um, gets quoted, and if you do that, you're completely crazy, um, you know, then, uh, um, yeah, copyright, you've already got copyright in your blog posts. 
um, Creative Commons is a way to license what you create so that you know, you're recognizing that other people may want to use it, and you're saying, all right, you can use it under these conditions. Um, so yeah, Creative Commons can be, good, can be good for meshes. You can say, yes, you can use this mesh under these conditions. You know, if you only use it, um, if you attribute me, if you only use it, um, you know, if you don't use it for commercial activity or if you don't make derivatives out of it, um, whatever. Um, in a way, um, you can look at uh, Second Life's permission system as being a licensing system. Um, so it's uh, copyright and Creative Commons are different beasts but they work well together. Um, a group so that we know when events are on and somewhere we can follow when events will be held, that's a really freaking good idea and I probably should have done that before right now. Um, yeah, I'll set up a group and people can join if they want to because that would be an awesome idea and I probably should have already done that. That would have been smart. Yeah, yeah, without joining fees would have been really clever, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll do that, um, and I'll, uh, I'll let people know. Yep. Yay. Okay, anyone else? Speak now, forever hold your peace. Because, oh my god, I'm tired of talking. Oh, the jury has pronounced you all guilty. All right. <laughs> okay, fabulous. I'm turning off my freaking voice because I hate talking. Okay.